Good morning! Today I'm gonna take you guys foraging. We're gonna do spring backyard foraging. I'm gonna show you what you might have in your backyard and I'm super excited because I found something this morning while sitting in the morning sunlight and I got so excited so I'm so excited to show you guys. How many times am I gonna say excited? By the way, first things first, let me show you my new shirt. It says, do not disturb the vibe. I'm gonna go foraging if my shirt. oh you want me to show you your shirt yeah oh there's leo's shirt got dinosaurs if you don't spray in your backyard with pesticides or whatever you should have weeds and you might even find weeds regardless but i'm going to show you a few things that are in my backyard and we're going to go through the neighborhood a little bit too do you know just there how cute is that Perfect for our foraging day. I just bought it yesterday. Here are the baby girls. All right, we're at the side of my house and I'm gonna show you the first plant. I should have brought my tripod. But we have first one, which I don't know a lot about, so bear with me, but it is chickweed. So that is chickweed. It's super, super tiny and I have it here throughout the lawn and chickweed is really good for people who have stomach problems constipation doesn't have a smell or anything but you don't want to consume excess amounts of chickweed because it can you know cause you some issues for you but that's chickweed okay i got my tripod here because my arm is already getting tired going back to chickweed so the reason why it's called chickweed because a lot of chickens enjoy them. I love giving my chickens the weeds. Chickweed against here and stuff and I'll just, you know, grab it and pull it and they'll eat it. It's this pretty white flower. Make sure when you're doing your foraging that you have, you check multiple resources when you're identifying a plant. But it has these like little, little white petals here. It looks like a little flower and birds like enjoy them too. Chickweed has been used for years. It's been in a lot of traditions back in the day, and they've used it for like uh, scurvy, which is a deficiency in vitamin C. This has a high amount of vitamin C. You can do salves with chickweed. And I'll try to do like a separate video maybe of like making different things with the chickweed. That's a little bit about chickweed and it has these leaves. It kind of spreads all the way around, like my yard, but that is chickweed for you. The next flower that we're gonna forage for is something you probably already know, and it is the dandelion. Dandelions are so resilient, and it really reminds me of motherhood, and that just how we just keep on going and going no matter what, like we have to take care of our children. Dandelions are just so resilient. Even if you mow the lawn, they're still there, and that's why a lot of people get rid of them. Actually, I see a bee right here. Here's the bee. Let's see if I can flip it. There he is. Hello, honeybee. The honeybee came here for our dandelion lesson. Dandelions are the first food source for the bees, the honeybees. And that's why I don't want my husband to use weed killer in our lawn. And he loves the honeybees too, so it works out. It works out also that the people that lived here prior have not taken care of their lawn. I benefit in that regards. But yes, dandelions are so amazing. You can make dandelion jelly out of them. I've made that. It's delicious. It's so similar to honey. I've made dandelion lotion bars. I've made dandelion muffins. Oh, they're so good. Make sure when you're picking and foraging that you leave, you take less like you leave more for the bees than what you take. We have so much dandelions. So right before my husband mows the lawn, I'll usually forage for them. I already foraged some and it's not even April yet. It's still March. So who knows when this video will go up, but this is uh, the dandelion and there's so many things that you can make with it. I think you can even make like dandelion wine or beer. I've seen videos on that. Super, super cool. And you would never think the amount of weeds that you have in your yard, how beneficial they are, all of them are. So that is the, the dandelion. All the weeds are just pretty flowers. They're so pretty. You could just bring them in your house and have like a little a little vase and have some pop of color in the house. But also, let's talk about, you can eat plant of dandelion. This is the dandelion root. I mean, the dandelion leaves. 
dandelion is really bitter, but if you've ever heard of the dandelion leaf and root tea, that's where that comes from. From You can eat the whole plant. And this is bitter, you could put this in your salads if you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a dehydrator. I'm gonna order one today and when I get it, I'm gonna dehydrate these and make a dandelion root tea for myself to have on hand because a lot of the leaves the leaves are not useful to the bees or anything i'm going on and on that is your dandelions um, i just love dandelions they're so beneficial it's just crazy that we see these as weeds and nuisance in our lawns rhubarb is look at this this is crazy she's growing so much okay the next weed that we're going to talk about is henbit henbit you can use the whole plant and it looks very similar to the the little the net, nettle weed but they but they look different and we'll identify them oh there's some chickweed over here as well i'm gonna place you guys down hopefully none of my neighbors come out and talk to me while i'm doing this so this is henbit over here this is what it looks like it has these little purple pink tubicles or tubules little tubes it goes to the bottom as well and this is the shape of the leaves. This is part of the mint family. It has a square stem. And we have a bunch on the side. And I have a butterfly garden that I had told my husband not to mow around it and around the tree. Because there's dandelions and hembit and it looks so pretty and the bees are just all over it. We gotta save our pollinators, right? I will have three pollinator gardens this year. This is really high in iron, high in different vitamins and minerals. It's high in vitamin C as well. And you could put this in a tea or you could, you know, dehydrate it and stuff. I don't think it has really like a sweet smell or anything. That's a little bit about henbit. Oh, and the one that I told you from the beginning that I was so excited to see. And we'll make a tea today. But here is my butterfly garden right here. And those are rocks me and my son painted. And isn't it just so pretty? It just looks so nice. And then it's around the tree too. And I could just see a bunch of bees right now are at it. Okay, so I have some stinging nettle. Not stinging nettle. It's just purple nettle. That's what it's called. Some purple nettle over here that we can mix in our tea today. And purple nettle is part of the mint family as well. It's not part of the nettle family. It has a square stem. It has heart-shaped leaves. It has those sort of purple and pink tubes or tubicles, whatever the term is for that. I know that's, this is not, this is me just showing you how fun this is and what you could find. I'm not an expert, definitely do your research and you're responsible for yourself. I'm just excited to share this with you guys. So I have some purple nettle all around here and I'm going to dehydrate the purple nettle and make it in a tea. But that's the purple nettle, it has similar ben benefits to the hembit, it has a lot of really good benefits for you. Really great as a spring detox tea to have. And then I have this, I don't know what this is yet, this little purple one or blue. This one's really pretty. It's hard to see. But easy, like within time, how I found all of these weeds. I found two, one yesterday and one today. So the next one is wild violet. This is a white one. Usually the wild violet is like a, a violet color. It has like this J-shaped tube. It has these lines in here. I'm not really like here to teach you the identification just a little bit what it looks like and what I do with it. But violets, and I'll show you, I just, me and my son just harvest the tongue when we walked around. You, we make wild violet jelly, you can make syrup, have like an experiment with your kid if you have a toddler or really any age. It is super fun. That's a little bit about the wild violet. I am I'm sure there's a bunch of benefits for the violet as well, but I don't know them off from the top of my head. And then here we have a dandelion and these are the seeds these are the little seeds i never knew that until i got older 
My neighbor just pulled in. I probably look silly. So the last that I'm gonna show you in this spring foraging video is cleaver. I'm so excited. I just learned about cleaver and I'm so excited to show you guys. I have some over here and this is what the cleaver looks like. It's like, no, I'm not in the sun. There we go. It's a better view of the cleaver. And the best way to know that it's cleaver is this. It sticks to you. Isn't that so cool? That's what it looks like. Oh my God, I'm just obsessed. That is it. Whoop. My inner child is satisfied. We're gonna make a tea with this. So I'm super excited about cleaver and I'm super excited to make a tea. It helps with the lymphatic system. So if you think about it, right, it sticks to you. So when you drink it in a tea, it's gonna stick all that material that it needs to be flushed out of yourself so it's like a really good between this the nettle and hembe, you make a tea and you get all those vitamin and minerals and it's like a spring tonic like a little spring tonic a little spring detox anyway this makes my heart so happy it really connects me to my inner child and I just think this is hilarious. I, my neighbor was, I was just showing her and she was laughing at me in a good way. She, she likes that I'm into all this. And she actually knew that it was cleaver, I think. Anyway, that's the cleaver. And we're going to go make a tea with some nettle. Oh, my little uh, woodpecker. He's always eating at my bird feeder. Just flew away. He, oh, he's on the tree. I don't know if you guys can see him. Oh, he just flew. He, he's on a branch. Let's see if we can zoom in on him. I don't think I can zoom in on him. He's waiting for me to get out of the way so I can eat. There you have it. I showed you chickweed. I showed you hembit dandelions. I showed you the purple nettle. And then I showed you the cleaver. That's just some fun things that you could look around and do different things with it. And the purple nettle, you can dehydrate and have that for the winter time so that you just have a high vitamin mineral tea for the winter. I'm going to gather these cleavers and we're going to make some tea. I think the... It has a sweet flavor from what I've watched. I haven't had a tea yet with it, but we will see. Here is my patch of cleaver here. I'm just gonna pull some of them and make tea. Also to note when you're foraging, make sure you're not, you know, like this is my my lawn and we don't do pesticides or anything. We don't do weed killers, but just be aware of like how busy your street is. Our street is really not that, it's not busy at all. And you don't want to pick weeds and ingest them in a high traffic area because you're gonna get those toxins from it. Anyways, let's go inside and make some tea. I definitely want to make a salve out of the chickweed, but I gotta learn how to do that. But we got so much chickweed over here in the corner and dandelions and it's just crazy how people don't see that. Oh, I have more violets to show you right here. There they are. I'm gonna show you how they look. There is another term for the wild violets, um, but I'm gonna pick these because we're gonna use them. I'm gonna freeze them, but this is a better uh, view of what a, a wild violet is. You see that? It has five petals. One, two, three, four, five. It has that J-shaped tubercle, and they're just so cute. Okay, I only got a little bit. So really when you're trying different herbs, you wanna try one at a time before you try others, just in case it, you don't react or you don't react well to it. But I'm a rebel and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it, let's do it. I don't have like a fancy tea diffuser to like let it seep in and stuff, but I'll put it in the, these diffusers and then I'm gonna cover the cup with a plate. Sorry if you hear my dishwasher. I'm gonna cover the cup with a plate so that the vitamins and minerals don't evaporate. I'm gonna let that sit for for about like five minutes. But here's the violets and I'll show you that. And I only got a little bit, it's just for me. But this is gonna be a great spring detox. It's gonna smell really, really earthy. Also, my husband got me this chicken cup recently. Isn't it so cute? And his little baby chick. 
I have a lot in the freezer and I've read that you can freeze the stuff before you use it. So hopefully that is true, but those are all the wild violets. Isn't that so many? We just picked these. So this week I'm gonna make the violet jelly, but this is the actual violet color of the wild violet. So I'm just gonna put those in here and typically you do want them de-stemmed because you don't want the stems, but I'll do that another time. And I just have it in these recycled bags. I have this little tea diffuser thing and I'm just gonna put that in there so that it just doesn't get all over my water because we're just gonna steep it for five minutes. And then I can compost the rest in my compost bin. smells so earthy. Mm. We'll let that steep. Let's see, it has this light yellow green color to it. Let's see. No. There we go, right there. It smells like wheat. I'm gonna wait till it cools down a little to taste test. All right, guys, let's do the final taste test. I just love this shirt. Perfect for today. Honestly, it tastes like a hint of weeds, a hint of medicine and water. I didn't use a lot, so that's probably why. Hmm. A cup of medicine from my house to yours. Cheers. You will not just believe what I found. I whole, found a whole abundance of cleaver. A ton of it under our deck. enjoyed my first foraging spring foraging video I'm excited to learn more about these medicinal weeds that everybody has the potential to have these in our hand and in our homes and to learn I just really what I get excited the most is to learn about all of these things and what they could do for you because you just never know when you're gonna need it hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video bye